Okay, next question on the right side. Well, I'll just take the microphone, I guess. Uh, good evening. First off, I wanted to thank you uh, a lot for this opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, you mentioned Jordan Peterson earlier, and he's been gaining a lot of popularity. Um, he talks a lot about values, like intrinsic archetypical values, and they conveniently happen to be Christian values. So my question would be if atheism or secular societies have failed to deliver a compelling narrative for people that they can like grasp on. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. So um, yeah, I know Jordan, um, and I think what the appeal is, uh, you can go on skeptic.com and read my explanation for the phenomenon. I, I, I think the appeal is more of self-help. Uh, you know, people feel like, not that they don't have the right Christian values, they go to him for the same reason they go to say Tony Robbins, who's a, a huge, literally huge, he's like 6'4", but he's very popular. And you know, uh, there's a Netflix film called I'm Not Your Guru in which it shows Tony Robbins is very much everybody's guru. And, and, and it, it has nothing to do with Christian values. He's just talking about like Jordan. Stand up straight, make your room, you know, work out every day, eat white. And because the world is a dangerous, harsh place and people aren't nice and so you gotta be strong, something like that. I think that's the appeal. Where, in my opinion, and that of uh, uh, others that have studied him, uh, he gets a little murky on the, you know, did the resurrection happen? Well, what do you mean by the resurrection? Uh, do you mean suffering for your sins or, or like you ask him, do you believe, if you ask me, do you believe in God? The answer is no. If you ask Jordan, Jordan, do you believe in God? It would take me 40 hours to answer that question. <laughs> All right, if it takes you 40 hours to answer, then you know, you're talking about something completely different. And there he gets into Jung and Freud and Nietzsche and Dostoevsky and all that stuff. And again, that's, it's okay to say novelists have tapped into deep truths about human nature. That's true. I mean, the reason Shakespeare and Jane Austen and so on are popular novelists is because they're saying something deep that we all kind of get. Like that, that's true, these power struggles and, uh, and, and sexual infidelities and all, all this stuff. Yeah, they've tapped into that before cognitive sci scientists started studying it. But, but, to, but to then, and here's where he gets fuzzy, then he makes a transition from that to like a scientific truth. It's like, no, no, wait. It's okay to say it's, a metaphorically, it's metaphorically true or the novelist making up the story or tapping into something that's true but, but, but the story's not true. <laughs> and, and, and there he gets a little murky that makes people nervous, like me. Uh, so we heard uh, Michael talk about John Peterson. I wanted to ask Richard if you have an opinion, uh, an opinion on him as well, and if you plan on debate, uh, debating him in the future. I, I'm sorry, I didn't get that at all. Jordan Peterson, is that what you said? Yes, exactly. I wanted to he hear wants to know your opinion, uh, Jordan Richard's Peterson. Opinion. Oh, and God. if you plan on debating him. <laughs> <laughs> Or not, God. I'm just aware that every time I look at the internet, Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson. Um, no, I don't have an opinion. Um, no. Why should I have an opinion? <laughs> okay, next to the I gather, I, 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 I gather he objects to being forced by the Canadian, by Canadian law to use pronouns that people want him to use, and on, on that, I'm thoroughly in his favor. Good for him. Uh, yeah, my question was Jordan Peterson related, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just find it weird that you don't have an opinion on him, because <laughs> your teachings are what you usually say is, would be contrary. Yeah. I never offer an opinion on something of which I'm ignorant. Yes. Here, here. <laughs> so, okay. um, first of all, thank you both for, for the great discussion tonight. Um, looks like three people already asked my question, so I'm going to ask it from a different angle. So, Professor Dawkins, Please you not said Jordan that Peterson. you... Please yes, not Jordan unfortunately, Peterson. I'm very sorry about that. 
So you said you have no opinion about him. It looks like, oh, no. it's, looks like <laughs> oh, no, he it does an opinion you. about you. There is a video of him saying that he thinks atheists, not literature, Dawkins should be, uh, should be oppressed, for starters. And number two, um, Michael, I've read your article. I've read uh, Stephen Benker's article on, on Skeptic Magazine. I've seen your, I've listened to all the podcasts with Sam Harris, etc. The trouble is that people like uh, Peterson are uh, filling up the void that was created with millennials and Gen Z um, by not believing in gods. And, and he's, gr he's, he's big with uh, Gen Z in his advocacy of the, of the Christian God, of the Bible, his twisted um, relationship with, uh, with reality and truth. And in your time, Michael, you have debunked people like Chopra and others, but you didn't quite push back uh, in your discussions with, uh, with Peterson. My question is why? Well, because again, it, it depends which claim is he making that I'm gonna push back on. There's parts of Deepak's that I don't push back on when he says, you know, meditation is good. Okay, yeah, it probably is. Not for me, but other people, okay, fine. But then when he gets into the quantum consciousness woo-woo, then I push back. So again, I'm happy to push back. I did in my article on Peterson about his theory of truth, the archetypal theory of truth, which is very close to Ronald Hoffman's uh, interface theory of truth. Hoffman, he's a cognitive psychologist at uh, UC Irvine who has this interface theory of truth that the brain is like, um, well, sort of like a laptop screen and these icons are floating around on there. They don't really exist in the brain. They're just, they're just our perceptual icons. So all of the, what we perceive in, in nature isn't real. They're just icons because our senses are just converting photons of light into neural impulses, for example. So it's, then, then you can go, he doesn't quite go so far as say solipsism or something like that, but, but I push back on that and, and, and Jordan's theory of truth is very similar to that, which I think is incorrect. And, and I said so, and, and you know, if, if you've got four or five hours uh, to drive, listen to the Sam Harris podcast. I both did, of as, them. As, yeah. as a matter of fact. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's just uh, painful to listen to. It is. Uh, 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 yeah, there was a Star Trek episode where uh, Captain Picard is captured and being tortured. And the Four torture will stop down. if he'll mm. say, there are five bright lights here even though there's four, and he keeps saying, there's four, and it, it, they crank up the pain. And so finally he's rescued, and b back at the ship, he tells the ship's counselor, Troy, you know, I came to believe there were five. That was my truth, and I almost said it. But there were really just four. <laughs> he's just wrong. All right, so anyway, that's my critique. Of that's it. straight he's, from 1984. When, when Winston, oh, yes, yes, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, they stole that, that's they right. They stole it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's only seven plots in Hollywood. <laughs> they just recycle them all. <laughs> all right, so uh, on Jordan Peterson? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh I'm joking. All right. Um, He's joking. He's joking. Yeah, I'm joking. So 